How's it going, everybody? This is Eight Man Football Breakdowns with Coach E. I'm Coach E. Let's get started. So today I'm going to give you an intro to my channel, what I'm going to be doing here on YouTube, what kind of videos I'll be posting, and then we're going to get into some eight-man football stuff, specifically formations offensively and alignments defensively. All right, let's move on. So first off, I want to say I'm no expert. I'm not an expert football coach. I'm not an expert YouTuber by any means. This is my first ever video. So basically what I'm going to be doing here is sharing my experiences and giving some background on more eight-man football-oriented ideas and stuff. You see a lot of 11-man football pages out there and resources on YouTube and other places specifically, but not much dedicated to eight-man. So that's kind of what I'm going to be doing here uh, on this channel. So there's a little intro to my channel. Let me give you a little bit more background. So also, if you like all things related to football, I'll have other sorts of stuff like that on here all things dedicated to football, specifically in eight-man football. So if you're an eight-man football guy or want to know more about the eight-man game, stick around. Um, a little bit about myself. I've been coaching for a little over six years now uh, in Kansas. And during my time as a player in high school, I made it to the state championship. I was a part of really good teams and was a part of four state championship appearance teams. We won it twice, lost twice. But and then I've also – been lucky enough to be a part of two state championship appearances as a coach up to this point so far. Um, so anyways, I'm going to be giving you some of my personal opinions. Obviously, that doesn't mean you have to agree with me, but then I'll give you some ideas, experiences, probably show you some schemes and how what terminology we kind of use and go through some plays and show some video cut ups if I get to that and might even have guests or more stuff on here uh, if this becomes something I enjoy doing or if I get some feedback from it, I'll make it an every week thing, basically. So, all right, moving on. So now let's get into some actual eight-man formations offensively. And I'm going in Kansas from most common to least common to how I've seen it over the years. So first off, and once again, uh, coaches, terminology could be different. So don't worry about this. If you call it something different, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I'll say ace. So one by one. The reason I call it ace is because it is one by one. You have one split receiver on each side. So it's even on each side. But obviously, with eight man, you have one tied in, which you could have two, but it wouldn't be an ace formation then. And then, of course, again, you wouldn't have to be under center. Um, but that's just how I'd have it drawn up here. Spread formation, two by one. This is about as spread as you can get without going empty. Um, and this is becoming a lot more common nowadays, especially with the more passing game attack, more pass attack heavy games or heavy teams we see now uh twins there's your twins look once again you could be in pistol you could be in shotgun and another thing if you guys call each position group differently with different symbols completely ignore what i got on there this is just to give you an idea uh i formation that's definitely kind of gone by the wayside i guess you could say it's not as common as it used to be it used to be really common um and you still do see a handful of teams running it but it's not as common because most teams don't really have a big fullback big athletic fullback and a big athletic running back and they don't just run it right at you anymore most of the time you see the spread run game now specifically in kansas and eight man anyway um unless you got to go all the guys to do it of course but and then we got single back formation here one split guy and then empty so in this case this is the most common empty formation of course you could have trips you could move a guy over here or move a guy over here um you could have trips with the back but it would be one guy would be covered up and be ineligible so uh, i'll show you that here in a little bit but but anyways i've seen it ran like that but most times you're not going to run trips with the back because it's in the ineligible you have an ineligible receiver or you're covering up somebody uh and here's a split backs formation um you do see this kind of also you'll see a guy go to a wing you'll see the single wing formation in eight man or an unbalanced look some others i didn't really mention or have on here so wing there like i just mentioned there at the end you can go pistol formations unbalanced i just barely briefly mentioned that trips and here i'll show you a couple of those real quick using huddle here huddle playbook's pretty nice um so here let's show you the trips real quick so there's trips and what I meant by the trips, 
uh, with a back, you would have to do something like this. You'd have to have a guy covered up, pull a guy over, put a back in here. So there's trips, but you have a, you're covering up your F receiver or whatever you guys would call this, and you have an eligible guard now. I've seen it done that way, but it's not very common. So there you got trips, then pistol formation and spread or a pistol wing formation spread, uh, double wing and empty formation. Uh, what else did I not say? Oh, we could go unbalanced wing pistol. Anyway, that just give you some idea of some of the other ones that I didn't get to. Moving on, base eight-man alignments on defense. So now we're talking defense here. From, once again, most common to least common to how I see it in Kansas over the years and how I've seen it. Um, and, and even, honestly, how we ran it when I was in high school. So 3-2 defense will be the first one we start off with as the most common and still pretty much is. Um, I don't really know 100% why that is, but I would say probably because most defensive coaches in Kansas are wanting to stop the pass first nowadays and – they feel more comfortable with three DBs in coverage with the corner and two safeties. And most defensive coaches, I would say, I don't speak for everybody, but most, I think, like to run cover three zone and have three deep, deep uh, safeties or deep defensive back, excuse me, defensive backs in coverage. Um, but of course, you could run man or you could run cover two and blitz the safety or blitz a corner and drop those two. I mean, you can do lots of different things, but I would say cover three is probably the most base defensive coverage in eight-man, at least in Kansas. And another reason I say this is probably more common than other defenses is because particularly in eight-man division two in the smaller schools, when you have anywhere from 12 to 25 kids on your whole team, it's hard to find two legit athletic linebacker type guys in your high school to go out for football, let alone three, because there used to be a three – Three used to be the probably one of the more dominants, but now three two is really kind of the most common, and it's hard to find even just two good linebackers. Um, but anyways, moving on. Four one, I would say this. I've seen this a lot more this year, where these DNs would also become like outside linebackers, so it'd kind of almost be a two man front rather than a four one. But it looks like a four one if you're in any sort of a tight formation, so that's why I called it the four one. I'll get into the two-man front stuff a little bit more here in a little bit, but that would probably be the next common. 4-2, and this we did see a couple of true 4-2s. Once again, we did see some 4-2s with the outside backers or DNs, whatever you want to call them, out even wider and kind of look like a 2-2 stack in the middle. We've seen that a few times. Moving on, okay, once again, so the 3-3 three, three used to be the probably the most common defense, and that was when it was – really run heavy offenses and all the best teams that made it to state were the superior run teams, which even nowadays it still kind of is that way. But most teams at least have some sort of passing game attack that when they reach state that you see a team that can do both. But back in the back in my day, we did not necessarily pass the ball very often. So you could see a three, three defense a lot. If we came out in the eye formation, then you have three linebackers, six in the box to stop the run. And similar to like if you're running a 4-2 or a 4-3 even, you're not necessarily worried about stopping the pass. You want to stop the run first. So this was a more common run-stopping defense, and we don't see it quite as much anymore. Uh, same thing with a 5-1. You don't see it very often. The reason – there's not really a reason to have five down linemen anymore if people aren't going to go with the eye formation and run their biggest kids right at you, right down the middle. It's, it doesn't – so it's kind of gone – Gone away a little bit too. Some others I didn't mention. Okay, I'll get, I'll show you those real quick. Two five four three. I briefly mentioned it, but so here one second. Let's get into the two five real quick. So what I mean by two five is actually like a two three defense. So you got these outside linebackers being like overhang defenders. You could even have apex defenders and kind of play in between there. But then you got a corner, probably just inside shade, and then a safety over the top. So this is how we've seen it most of the time, a 2-5, and I'm calling it a 2-5 because the corners are usually just barely on the heels of the linebackers, so they're kind of in a line. Um, and then if it was a double tight formation, they would be like almost even. But this, in this case, it's more of a 2-3 look. 
it's really just a three two flopped with the linebackers widen now is all it is but there's a lot of ways you could do this and we've seen it a bunch of different ways so this guy could come up here that could go a two two stack like that again and this guy could just jam or play the flat take away bubble take away tunnel screen now screen flare swing screen whatever you want to call it but anyway there's a two five look let's get rid of these and show you the four three which four three of course is a situational defense only to stop a run heavy run team so i mean if you're in a four three i don't know what specific pass like responsibilities there are but i would say it's probably the dns probably have c gap or flats and safety over the top's got deep middle so probably cover one and these outside backers probably have to be head up with the ends and play man if they're a passing team but like I said before, it's a situational run defense, so you probably wouldn't ever see this defense if it's a passing team. So, but anyway, just to give you an idea of a couple of the defenses. Once again, though, I'm no expert football coach. I've been doing this for only a little over six years. Been around the eight-man game my whole life, so almost 30 years now um, in Kansas anyway. Um, so, yeah, I just really wanted to share my experiences and – potentially help other young eight-man coaches just coming into the profession trying to become an eight-man coach because I was way behind the game prior to come, becoming a coach and I thought I knew it all and, and I was dead wrong but what you saw here in this video or if you if you're interested in all things football specifically eight-man um, like specifically these types of things stick around if I get a good following on this or if people enjoy what they're what they see I'll keep doing it so if you did like it Please subscribe and thanks for watching.